Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. This time we're going to take a look at a 1970s uh, British made signal generator from uh, Raycal. Uh, Raycal apparently um, got going in 1950 and uh, eventually were, were bought by what's now Talis. I think it's in about uh, 2000 but certainly they were a, a well-known name for many years here in the UK. Uh, and I spotted this advert on eBay um, and what encouraged me was the um, the fact that all the segments were alight in the display and I, before I uh, decided to buy it I had a quick look uh, around the web and found not only the instructions but also a service manual and I could see that apart from the custom chip most of the other components would have been um, it would have been possible to um, to have replaced them or hopefully um, had a go at uh, repairing it anyway but I had a sneaking suspicion that this uh, bit of kit was actually going to work uh, and I'm very pleased to say I was right so let's start with a look at the front panel of the uh, of the instrument as it was received here's the front panel then of the uh, frequency counter as received it probably isn't uh, coming out too well on the video but um, it's it's very dusty and grubby um, and uh, will certainly need a, a good clean up. Um, I'll put you out your misery and say uh, yes I've had it connected up and it appears to work absolutely perfectly. Now I was one of the reasons as I said earlier I was pleased uh, to, to take the risk is that um, I managed to get a full manual and also a full service manual um, and the manual explains the various functions. Now I'm really only ever going to use this as a frequency counter using channel A, probably on AC coupling, and if we set the button here to auto, then uh, it will just act as a, a frequency counter up to 50 megahertz. I only uh, do stuff really below 30 megahertz and very often not that high so this is uh, absolutely fine i do have the means of measuring frequencies higher than that if i need to but um for the price i'm not going to grumble for this because it looks good so um yeah so on the front panel here you've got the various settings and quite a lot of these buttons here are to do with the mode where it um it either measures period uh, or it can also measure a uh, number of pulses and it's possible having uh, had a bit of a read of the manual to feed a, a triggering signal in through channel B and it will um, count the number of uh, pulses in between uh, uh, two events if you like so it's possible for it to um, rather than be a frequency counter to actually uh, count a, a number of events which I suspect for some applications is very useful it's not really um, uh, much use to me but uh, you know I just wanted a frequency counter um, and then on the back there's a uh, an output which um, is apparently one megahertz I've not checked that yet um, but I will do um, so next plan is to um, get the lid off uh, and have a look inside and um, uh, just see uh, what this bit of 1970s technology actually looks like um, but yeah I'm very pleased with that um, it uh, seems to be uh, a nice bit of kit and it'll certainly do uh, do what I want. Okay, so there's a couple of screws that just need to be loosened on uh, each side of the uh, the machine at the at the rear. And as soon as you've done that, it's then possible to simply lift away um, both the top and the bottom part of the case. So um, since the bottom part of the case essentially just contains um, uh, the bottom of the PCB. We'll just have a look at the um, the more interesting side, which is the uh, the main circuit board itself. And we've obviously got mains transformer, power supply, etc. The bridge rectifier here. Appears to be a transistor of some kind attached to this side. That's probably a voltage regulator. And then fairly um, old-fashioned style uh, ribbon cable that. Um, takes information to the uh, the front panel for the LEDs uh, and I don't know how yeah, I will actually I'll take a high resolution photo of this and just show you some of the ICs but uh, you can see it's full of um, 74 series uh, logic chips 
and if I just glance at a couple, yeah, most of them are dated uh, 1978 towards the end of the year. So this is, uh, well, it has to be a late 70s machine. The only really custom chip in here is, uh, is that one. Um, the rest of it is um, fairly straightforward. I guess those are possibly uh, ROMs of some description. So yeah, that, that's the circuit board and would be very straightforward to, to change your part if you needed to. There's plenty of um, room to work, which uh, is quite nice. I think the other thing to say is that uh, the inside of here is extremely clean, very little, very little dust at all. In fact, yeah, there isn't any. Um, or minimal, uh, which is good. Um, I think the only disappointment for me really is that uh, when when power is applied to the uh, connector at the back, uh, the transformer comes on and stays on. Even when the on-off switch at the front panel is turned off, the transformer is still energised. So I'll probably do what I've done with a few other things, including some uh, modern Chinese kit. I'll probably put a switch at the back that allows me to uh, to switch the mains on and off so that uh, I don't have that um, that issue with uh, it being powered up all the time which I'm not uh, terribly keen on as well as it being uh, wasteful of, uh, of energy. So yeah that's that's the inside of uh, the machine and it um, uh, appears to be very nicely done indeed. Okay well here we are back with a, a much cleaner frequency counter so um, I will uh, find I'll do a before and after photo as best I can I'll just put them up now so you can see the difference between the the, the, the dirtiest bit was the front panel so uh, before's at the top afters at the bottom probably isn't terribly obvious on on the photos um, how grubby it was but uh, anyway it's cleaned up fine just use a little bit of uh, IPA and some uh, cotton buds or q-tips depending which part of the world you're in so I've had the machine switched on now for it's just coming up on uh, well nearly an hour actually uh, and currently I've got it set here uh, from in the check mode where it actually routes its internal one megahertz oscillator uh, to the counter and obviously it's checking itself so um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's accurate however um, this has got the built-in 5 MHz reference oscillator. There are a couple of versions according to the handbook, but this has got the 5 MHz one. Um, here's the 5 MHz circuit board. Um, you can hopefully see the 5 MHz crystal there. And also uh, that transistor is actually a germanium transistor, which gives you uh, an indication uh, of its age. So that's on a little daughter board anyway, tucked away on the back panel and it's possible to uh, adjust the inductor to um, to fine tune the, the oscillator. I, I don't have the kind of precision measurement uh, to any kind of um, national standard to allow me to actually do that. So I'm not going to bother, it's certainly good enough for me. So the thing operates in two modes, uh, auto and manual. Uh, and to be quite honest, it's going to spend its life in auto because I just want a frequency counter. But if you do, uh, so currently it's showing one megahertz in auto mode. But if you go to manual, like so, um, it will now start showing you um, the frequency. And uh, depending on where you put these uh, buttons here, you get a, a different um, a different readout. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that it doesn't actually, um, no I don't think it shows you that in, um, no it doesn't, you can't actually use that in, in the, the manual mode. So if I go to operate, uh, like so, um, that's currently uh, showing one kilohertz. I've got this fed from my uh, one of my signal generators producing one kilohertz, which is what the counter agrees with. So if I go on to manual there, and because I've got that uh, the the period set to ten to the five, um, hence the decimal points there. If I go up to ten to the three, uh, it now shows us um, thousands, as in ten to the three. So that's that's one kilohertz. And if I just up the generator in one kilohertz steps, 
if I just go up to let's say 8 kilohertz there and there you are it, it, it's caught up so you get the idea with manual should you need it and I think really manual is going to get used for this um, if you want to make um, measurements of period or, or time a number of pulses which isn't um, my intention so uh, we'll go back to auto and uh, not surprisingly it's a green so what I'm now going to do is I'll go up to um, 10 kilohertz there and I'm going to fairly rapidly go up to that's 100 kilohertz um, let's go up to 800 kilohertz you can see it, it's following um, very quickly so there we are now at 1 megahertz remember this display is reading in, in, in kilohertz so if I then fairly rapidly increase things up to let's say uh, 20 25 megahertz there again it's doing fine really can't grumble and um, there's your 30 megahertz um, so I'll go up to uh, 45 just let it finish settling down yep yeah. so again it's doing fine now it's a 50 megahertz counter so we're up at um, 49 megahertz there I maybe need to just increase the sensitivity a little bit uh, what have I got this I've got one volt peak to peak according to the, um, the output yeah I am getting 49 there it's just a bit wobbly uh, and obviously once you go past 50 megahertz the, the display doesn't um, sort of make any sense anymore um, but uh, as you can see uh, that's working a treat so remember I showed you the check function here so on the back of the machine there is um, a BNC uh, socket which outputs the one megahertz signal um, which you can you can use obviously for, for other references sh should you so desire and so the two signal generators that I've got both have the ability to measure signal so here is the display from my Siglant um, signal generator showing the um, measured frequency of the output and here's the um, measured frequency output from the Yuntec, um, uh signal generator and as you can see they're within a few hertz of, uh, of the one megahertz output um, so for me at home here in the lab that's absolutely excellent I really can't um, fault that so yep I'm very pleased with my take a chance purchase at, at 30 pounds it's cleaned up nicely I'm very pleased with it so um, yeah there you go so I hope that's been interesting and I'll just pop up now a couple of shots from um, from inside so you can see uh, some of the detail of uh, for the circuit board and as I mentioned earlier most of the chips are dated um, 78 the latter part of 78 so this is clearly a, a late 70s job so it certainly would have been a great deal more than 30 pounds 40 odd years ago probably several hundred pounds 30 years ago I don't know if anybody does know be really interested so if you can put uh, put that in the comment if you comments if you've have any idea how much these things cost but I'm pleased with my um, with my British uh, signal generator from the 1970s okay well there you have the Raycal 9901 uh, universal counter and timer uh, nice bit of kit um, certainly going to be uh, a nice addition to uh, to my instruments uh, I probably didn't need a dedicated frequency counter but uh, uh, for 30 UK pounds I really can't uh, grumble too much I think that's uh, that's pretty good so I hope you've enjoyed um, watching and uh, having a bit of a, a look inside uh, an instrument from the from the late 70s thanks very much for watching and hopefully see you on the next video